Hi, my name is Christian Hernandez from the Cloud Platforms Business Unit over at Red Hat. In this video, I'm going to be going over how to install OpenShift 4 on Azure using the full stack automation method, along with any of the prerequisites you may need. You will need to have these prerequisites in place before you get started. You will need to have a Microsoft Azure account. You will also need to download the client CLI tools. These tools include both the kubectl and OC CLI tools. The OpenShift install CLI tool will also be needed as well. The installer will need to have a pull secret that can be obtained at try.openshift.com. I will be going over that as well. Finally, you will need to have a DNS domain in your Azure account. This can be a delegated domain or a domain bought directly from Azure. Once you have those prerequisites in place, you're ready to begin. Before we get started with the installation, we should verify that you have some of the prerequisites done already. First, make sure you have an Azure account by visiting portal.azure.com and log in. Once you've logged in, please verify that you've already delegated or created a DNS zone. In my example, I have already created az.redhatworkshops.io. Next, we would download some of the CLI tools by going to atry.openshift.com, click on Getting Started, then log in with your Red Hat account. Once you've logged in, you can choose between an infrastructure provider. In this case, we're doing the Azure installation, so I would go ahead and select Azure and follow the instructions provided. We're gonna need a few things here. First, we need to download the actual installer CLI binary by clicking download installer. We're gonna need the pull secret for the installer as well. And we're also gonna need the command line tools for the installation. Once you have downloaded and installing those, you're ready to begin. I will be performing the Azure setup using the Azure CLI. You don't need to use the AZ CLI tool. You can definitely use the Azure Web UI to perform these steps if you wish. But the Azure command does make things a little easier. For those that are using the AZ command, you'll need to make sure you're logged in first. You can do this by running the AZ login command. This will launch a browser for you to perform the login procedure. If you're already logged in, I recommend running the AZ account show command to verify that you're using the account that you want. The OpenShift installer will use a service principle to do the installation for you. You can create a service principle by running the AZ AD SP command. I'm also going to specify that I'll be creating an RBAC rule for this principle since it'll be creating Azure resources for me. I will give my service principal the name C Hernand Azure Video SP. Hitting enter will create the service principal for me. Save the output as you'll need it later. You need to assign your service principal two roles. To do this, you run the AZ role assignment command. The UUID in the command is the app ID of your service principal it was given to you upon the creation of the service principle. You will need to assign both contributor and user access administrator to your service principle. Here I have added the dash dash output none for this video. It's for security purposes. Before we begin the installation, one more thing is needed for the service principle. The service principal needs application read write owned by application permission from the Azure Active Directory graph. You do this by running the AZ AD app permission at command and provided the appropriate API and API permissions. Once that's done, your permission needs to be granted to the application via an admin consent. Only the tenant administrator for Azure can do this. If you are the tenant administrator, run the AZ AD app permission grant command it provided you in the output. 
You would also need your subscription ID. To get the subscription ID, you can run the az account list command. You can add dash dash output table for easier readability. Once this is done, you are finished with the Azure prep. Next, we're going to create a directory where the installer will store all the installation logs and artifacts. I will create a directory called OCP4 for this. Please note that this directory is empty. Once you do that, we can create the cluster. Simply run OpenShift install create cluster command specifying the directory you just created. This will ask you a few questions, one of which is which SSH key you'd like to use. Go ahead and select the key you would like to use. Next, I'll choose the Azure for the platform. Now it'll ask you for your subscription ID. This was in the output of the AZ account list command. Go ahead and paste that here. Then it'll ask you for your tenant ID. The tenant ID was given to you in the output when you first created the S uh, service principal. You will also need your client ID. This was in the app ID field in the output when you created your service principal. And your secret, which is the password field in the output when you created your service principal. Please note that this info is saved in your home directory. I will select the central US region for my installation. I will also select the domain that I've delegated to Azure. And I will name my cluster OpenShift 4. Putting my pull secret in my coffee buffer I will go ahead and paste it into the terminal. Remember, this pull secret was obtained from try.openshift.com when you downloaded the binaries. Once you pasted your pull secret, press enter and the installation will begin. The installation can take some time, so I will pause here and come back when the install has finished. Once the install is finished, it will display information about your, your cluster. This information includes where the API is running, how to export your kubeconfig environment variable in order to access your cluster. It also has information about where the web UI is running and which credentials to use to log in. The installer stores artifacts in the directory you specified during the install command. Export the kubeconfig environment variable in order to access your cluster. To ensure connectivity, test it with OC get nodes. We installed three masters and three workers. Run the OC get SC command to display your storage class. You also want to run OC get cluster version to verify that you're running OpenShift version 4.2. I hope you enjoyed this video and get a chance to test out the OpenShift installer for Azure. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment. Thank you.